Welcome to our LifeGate Church YouTube channel. My name is Bishop Brian Gallardo, and you are in the right place to hear a word from God right now that's going to change your right now season. If you are struggling in your faith, this message is for you. If you're not struggling in your faith, this message will be for you, so make sure and watch it. As you watch, comment in the comment section below, hit that thumbs up, and make sure you subscribe. Don't go anywhere. I want to do something at the end of this video that's going to give you some faith and some strength. I'll see you then. Matthew chapter number 14, verse 22 through 32 says this. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. And later that night, he was there alone and the boat was already a distance from the land. So it was nighttime and the disciples were in a boat being buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. You ever been in a season in your life where you felt like everything was against you? Can you imagine how the disciples felt? It was pitch black. It might as well have been an ocean. The waves started beating against the boat. The wind started beating against the boat. They could feel it with their face. All their senses were on high alert. Everything was against them. And after all, where are you, Jesus? I'm in the darkest hour of my life, and you left me. Shortly before dawn, verse 25, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. Somebody said, well, why were they terrified? Well, you'd be terrified too. Praise God. They said, it is a ghost, and they cried out in fear. So they were afraid of two things. Number one, the natural problems, and they were afraid of they didn't know what Jesus was doing in the mix because he wasn't doing it the way they thought that he should do it. But immediately Jesus said to them, take courage, it is I, and do not be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied. I don't know why Peter said this, but he said, tell me to come to you on the water. I wouldn't have said that. I'm like, I'm great, it's you, Lord. Come on in the boat if it's you. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw with his eyeballs all the hell that was coming against him, he was afraid and began to sink and cried out, Lord, save me. Now somebody said to me one time, well, he didn't have much faith. He began to sink. I said, bro, the dude walked on water. I'm sorry. Brother, the dude, the man walked on water. I've never walked on water, have you? He said, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and he caught him. And God's going to reach out his hand today and catch some of you. And he said, you have little faith. Now, I'm under, the, I'm under the determination of Peter's faith was little. Mine is microscopic. And so is yours because none of us are going out here to Lake Jacoma and walk on the water. Look at me funny, praise the Lord. He said, why do you doubt? Can we all agree that sometimes we just straight up doubt? Some of you are doubting today. If you're not doubting today about something, please tell us how you're doing that. He said, why do you doubt? And when he climbed into the boat, the wind died down. I want to preach a message to you this morning for just three hours entitled, Don't Drop the Ball. Don't Drop the Ball. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to speak to your precious people today. God, I'm so thankful that you called me to be a shepherd and not a rancher. These are your sheep. And I pray today, God, you would use me to set the captive free, to awaken the faith of God on the inside of their heart, and that you would shake doubt right off of them today. In the mighty name of Jesus and the people of God said, amen. Listen, you know how we do it at LifeGate Church. Turn to your neighbor and just tell somebody, greet them and tell them, don't drop the ball. Online campus, I want to encourage you today. Get in that comment section. I want to hear from you. I want to hear how God's ministering life to you. And I want you to boldly declare in the comment section, don't drop the ball. And then hit that share button. And let's believe God to reach the world for Jesus. Amen and amen. Give the Lord one more clap of praise because he's good. Amen and amen. Well, my wife and I have been married 21 years, y'all. I am so blessed. And we have a phenomenal, brilliant 15-year-old child that was in her first debate session in Kansas City this week. And she schooled everybody. She got this one kid stuttering and she said, never mind, no more questions. I said, get him, baby. 
She's so proud of her. But we haven't been in Kansas City all our lives. We moved here. The, God called us in 2007 to plant a church in Kansas City, Missouri. And so what we did when God called us to plant a church is we sold our house. We sold our cars. We moved into a very small apartment. And we started stockpiling money for a year. We did something very dumb. I would never encourage somebody to do this. We cashed in our 401ks and we put that in the church's savings account. Because we were believing God to, to help us to get to Kansas City. We we sold our cars and we bought two clunkers. I bought an old uh, Ford truck that was a stick shift with no air conditioning. And and it, but it, we made that truck work. Praise the Lord! I parked it behind the building because I was so embarrassed on how it looked once we got here. True story, elders, you remember? I parked behind the building because I was embarrassed of how how ratchet it looked. I started giving plasma to put groceries in our cupboards, and I worked a second job at a grocery store while in Omaha to put money into the church account. And of March of 2008, we packed up a U-Haul truck and we moved to Kansas City, Missouri, and we leased a storefront building over on 40 Highway, and we named it the church World uh, World of Truth Ministries. And and we had just a few a bit of people, and on our first service for Christmas, I want to show you this picture because it might help you to understand. This picture, this is none other than the famous Reverend Devin Becker right here. This is your tubby pastor 30 pounds ago. And this is Pastor Janae. Look, she looked just like a little baby girl in that picture. And that's my beautiful wife. We, she had just had our daughter, Olivia. And this was how we was rolling. Look how big our stage was. not That was it. You couldn't hardly move. You know, the, you thought this stage was little. Is that Elena? Elena Bobena's up in the house. Praise the Lord. That's, that's my girl. So proud of her. She'd been going here. She was a baby girl. And so we was as, listen, I know that we look like we got money in this picture. I'm just kidding. We was as broke as a joke, y'all. We was so poor, we couldn't pay attention. The floor mat at our house just said po. The O and the R, we couldn't afford it. We was broke. We was making wish sandwiches, two pieces of bread. Wish we had some meat. Let the church say amen. It was hard in this season. It was painful in this season. We had like 30 people max, and that was including everybody. We're going to show you another picture of what that looks like. This was our church. Come on, somebody. We had, we had the tags. Look at little Ben right here. Look at, look at Ben right there. Now, Timothy, who's here today, he wasn't in this picture because he was over in the kids' ministry, which was, a, which was a room about the size of this drum cubicle. And that's Elder Irene, and that's, that's Elder Mark. Now, me and Elder Mark have lost some weight since them pictures. Can the church say amen? But this was our little church. Somebody said, where all them people go? I don't know where they all went. You know, they just left us. Praise the Lord, but bless them. Bless their hearts anyway. We were so frustrated during the season. We left everything in Omaha, Nebraska, a good paying job. We were, I was on staff at a much, much, much larger church, and, and, and I call him Pops. Bishop Hart was taking care of us. He was paying us well. He took care of us. He afforded me the opportunity to preach. We had it good in Omaha, Nebraska. I came down here, and, and I came from multicultural ministry. All I've ever known was multicultural ministry, and this was not. This was a small church and a storefront in Independence, Missouri, in it was not what I pictured when I signed up for ministry. I was discouraged. I was frustrated. I was broke as a joke and didn't want to do it anymore. I quit every single Monday for about two or three years, and I had to talk myself into doing it again. Come on, y'all don't know the truth about all this. I got a phone call in this season from a church. The pastor had a humongous church, like 4,000, 3,000 people. And he said, hey, listen, I'm looking at retiring soon. And, and, and I want you to come on over, be on my staff. And, and I'm going to pay you really, really good. He told me the amount he was going to pay me. And it was, bless Jesus. It was really, really, really good. We'll get you a car leased. We'll make sure you get a house. We'll take care of you. It's going to be great. You'll be, you won't be eating them ramen noodles no more. You're going to be eating steak. Praise the Lord. And so I, I said, I think Jesus might be moving in my spirit, you know, praise the Lord. And he called me again. He said, this is what I want you to do. Just close the doors down on that little building. Lead those 30 people. They'll find somewhere to go, and you just come on staff with me. I said, well, let me call Pops and see what my pastor has to say. I hung up the phone, and I called Bishop. I said, oh, this is such a great opportunity. He didn't say nothing. When he don't say nothing, I know he's about to say something. And I said, listen, this is a great opportunity. I'm about to be blessed. I'm going to be blessed in the city blessing the field. It's going to be really, really good, Bishop. You know, I feel the Lord is stretching out in me. This is the Lord. I can because God said I can. And I said, I said, what should I do? He said, the Lord, Jesus, called you to those 30 people. 
He said, don't you dare drop the ball. Here's what I've learned about my walk with Jesus. Sometimes it doesn't go like I think it ought to go. Sometimes it don't look the way I think it ought to look. Come on in here. Sometimes it don't feel the way I think it's supposed to feel. Sometimes the waves are against me. Sometimes I'm being pushed back in a direction I don't want to be pushed back in. Sometimes I'm in a dark hour. Sometimes I feel like Jesus has left the building. And if you're here and you feel that way today, I came to tell three people, don't you quit on God. Don't you drop the ball. Don't you stop pressing. Don't you stop believing. Don't you stop advancing. Keep on swimming, Nemo. Come on in here. Just keep swimming. Just Look at somebody say, neighbor. No, no, no. You got to say it like a hooping Southern Baptist preacher. Say, neighbor. Don't drop the ball. Don't stop. Don't quit. Keep going. Don't drop the ball. Come on, say it with me. Say, don't drop the ball. What? Push your neighbor. Say it. Say it. Don't drop the ball. Don't drop the ball. Don't you quit. Don't you get up on. Come here, honey. Get up in her face like this. Come here. Say, listen to me. Listen to me. Don't drop the ball sometimes you gotta just grab your neighbor and shake them and don't slap them just shake them say listen to me I ain't quitting you you ain't quitting this you ain't quitting Jesus you're not gonna drop your faith you ain't gonna backslide you ain't gonna backpedal there ain't no quitting you and I'm not gonna let you don't drop the ball come on and give the Lord two seconds of praise now now what 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 would have this still would have been Calvary Presbyterian Church had I let this ministry go and obeyed my senses, come on. What if I let discouragement win that day? What if I let frustration rule my life? What if I aborted the plan and the destiny that God had on my life? You see, you have to understand today, hell wants you to quit. You say, well, I'm barely hanging on. That's good you're barely hanging on. That means you're still hanging on, praise God. All of hell will speak in your ear and say, quit serving the Lord. Anybody else? Because I've heard him say that to me. All of hell will tell you, give up, lay down your walk with God, suspend your faith, stop praying, stop giving to God praise, stop worshiping, stop going to church, stop sharing your faith, stop Stop reading your Bible. Stop serving at the local food pantry. Just quit on God. I am here to tell you there's no quit in you. I'm not going to let you quit. We're not going to let you quit. Greater is he who is in you than the hell that's talking to you, than the waves pushing against your life's boat. Don't drop the ball. I'm back. Yes, Lord. Some of y'all been looking at the wrong thing in the Bible. You're focused on the losers. In the words of El Scalator, I'm sick of losing. I want to win. Nacho. La who? The some of you all focus only on losing what you didn't do, what wouldn't work, what failed in life. Yes, you filed bankruptcy. Yes, you had a divorce. Yes, you did time in prison. Yes, you keep messing up on the same cycle. Yes, 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 yes. But I've got news for you. 
if you are on Jesus' side, you're not on the losing side. Just pick yourself up, baby, and head toward the winning circle. I got news for somebody today. This fight called hell against you has been rigged. It's a setup. It's not real. Come on, Tyson and Jake Paul. This ain't a real fight. All hell's going to lose. And you've already won before it's... The fight's been rigged, y'all. Come on. Y'all see that fight the other night? That was a mess. It was rigged. Come on. If they would have let Tyson loose that first round, Jake Paul would have been on his face. Talking about 1980s Mike Tyson Nintendo. There was a contract for that fight. Did you know that? Tyson was not allowed to give him an uppercut. Because Jake Paul was scurred of Iron Tyson. Somebody said, Mike Tyson lost. Mike Tyson went eight rounds at 59 years old. What are you talking about? Y'all are funny. He, he couldn't even do nothing in the fight. Because it was rigged. Because the contract said so. Honey, I got news for you today. There's another contract given to the believer. And I just want to let you know, though the waves are fighting against you today, though all hell is breaking loose all around you, the fight's been rigged. The contract says so. You're on the winning side. Come on in here. I've read the back of the book, the start of the book, and the middle of the book. And whom the sun sets free is free indeed come on you're on the lord's side the lord the lord come on death could not hold him the grave could not stop him he rose three days after the death don't drop the ball focus on the winners of the bible not the losers paul the apostle was a winner you said, but preacher, they, they cut his head off. Paul the apostle was a winner. He gave us some antidotes on winning. 2 Timothy 4 verse 7 was his testimony. He said, I fought the good fight of faith. Do you notice it's called a fight? It's not called a lay down. I've laid down the good lay down of faith. Boy, I sure did good. What'd you do? Nothing. What works did you display? Nothing. You know, works takes energy. Faith without works is dead. You want a good marriage? You think it's going to happen overnight? You're crazy. You think it's going to be good if you don't read books, listen to podcasts, don't seek help from mentors and advisors? You're crazy. A good marriage is intentional. You got to fight for it. You got to work for it. Come on in here. People who are wealthy don't just give a tithe and get wealthy overnight. They work hard to put hours in to become people that understand how money works to get wealthy. It takes a fight. Your faith is the same way. It's breathing. It's alive. It's an organism that grows and shrinks. You got to put things into it for it to grow. You got to get the word on it. Come on, somebody. You got to change your confession. You got to listen to faith-filled people. You got to fight for your right to have faith I told you that was in the Bible Kelsey thought he had it it's in the Bible well how, how do we win with this fight of faith well Paul goes on to tell us in 2 Timothy chapter number 2 verse 3 he said you must endure hardship in, endure hardship does not sound like a picnic with your feet in the sand and a Diet Coke in your hand. It sounds like a fight. Some of you let hell win because you don't say nothing. Some of you let hell win in your marriage because you don't fight it. You fight each other, not it. You got to start saying something. You know, let me teach you a word. No. Saying no to hell is saying yes to you. When hell tries to pop his head in our marriage, I say no. Heaven, yes. I tell hell no. and heaven. Yes. Hell. No. Why y'all cussing in church? 
there are literally people having a problem with it. They're like, what is going on in here? I tell you no too. Sickness? No. Divorce? No. Bondage? No. Do you know that seven out of ten men who go to church are bound by pornography? So we're going to tell pornography? No. So you know what else is attached to that is shame. You know what we're going to tell shame? No. Why y'all looking at me funny? No. No, you can't have my marriage. Nope, you can't have my mind. Nope, you can't have my money. Nope, you can't have my church. Nope, you can't have my relationships. No, 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 no. I'm on the winning side. So I'm going to fight this fight of faith. Come on in here. I'm going to endure this hardship like a good soldier. I'm not going back. I'm not going to back paddle. Back pedal. I'm not going to give in. I'm not going to backslide. I'm going to stand right here. Put on my spiritual gloves. Pray through. Fast through. Come on in here. Worship through. And fight the good fight of faith. Come on and say don't drop the ball. Don't drop the ball. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. Don't drop. Don't drop. Don't drop. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. Well, preacher, why am I being fought like I'm being fought? I just might not have any faith in God to have all this warfare going on. Come on. The warfare is the indicator of the assignment that's on your life. Hell fights you so strong because God's got something great on your life. For if you didn't have greatness on the inside of you, kingdom greatness, hell would leave you alone. I don't know why I just feel like being suicidal because hell's fighting the goodness in you. Well, it must be sin. No, it must be the holiness of God upon your life. The holiness of God is so strong on your life that hell hates you. Come on. That's why hell fights you. Your kingdom assignment attracts those attacks. The kingdom anointing on your life is why the enemy is fighting you. My prayer is every time I wake up, Brother John, I pray hell has a panic attack. I pray that I have to medicate all of hell with Prozac. You say, why? Due time. Because hell's made me worry. Hell has made me walk the floor. Your anointing is going to attract attack. Somebody said, don't drop the ball. You say, but preacher, it hasn't happened yet. Your time is coming. Don't drop the ball. But preacher, it's all falling apart. Don't drop the ball. But pastor, it looks like hell is winning. Everybody's left me. They're talking about me. It looks like the enemy's gaining ground. Come on, don't drop the ball. Don't quit on God. Don't stop pressing in. They used to say in the old church, don't stop pressing for your blessing. Come on, pray. Push until, push, push until something happens. Keep believing God. Keep standing on the promises of God. Keep battling for your breakthrough. Come on in here. Delay does not mean denial. Just because you haven't arrived yet in God, it does not mean that God has quit working. Come on. God is God. He is Lord. He sees you. He cares about you. And he will come through. But you don't drop the ball. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. Where's that ball at? Let's see how good y'all are at not dropping the ball. Hit it out there, Matthew. Oh, 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 oh. You caught it. Don't, don't drop it. This is where some of you are in life. You're juggling. Everything in life is up in the air. You're like, what is God? What kind of a church am I in today, my God? Don't drop it. Just keep pressing. Come on. Keep pushing. Keep breaking for your breakthrough. Come on. Keep slapping hell out the way. Come on. Somebody tell hell no. Come on, tell hell no. Not today, devil. Not today, Satan. Nah. -uh. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. Oh, no, don't drop it. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. Oh! Catch it. Catch it. Catch it. Catch it. Stop. Catch it. Catch it. Catch it. Catch it. Catch it. Right there. Hold on. Wait, stop. 
Catch it. Catch it. Lift it up. Lift it up. That's your faith. That's your faith. Some of your faith today is deflated. Some of your faith today is on the ground. And I'm going to tell you why. There's three lies you hear. Three things you hear. Not only the enemy say to you, but three lies you get into agreement. Number one, I'm the only one going through this. Ain't nobody else fighting like me. I'm the only one, Jesus. Nobody faces a Goliath like I face it. Nobody's struggling with this cycle that I seem to never get free from. Nobody else's body is being attacked. Nobody else is this dead dead. Our children's director, Miss Brittany, who's in the room today, we're so thankful for her. She's got a little girl named Kira. And if you've ever met Kira, you know she's as dramatic as her pastor. And when she was a little kid, she'd cry like that. And Bryn Chop would say, stop that. And she'd go, Some of you just need to put a smile on your face. Come on in here. You are not the only one that's going through it. You know why? First Peter tells us, do not, don't think it's strange concerning the hell that you're going through. Your neighbor's been through it. The person behind you may be going through it. The person in front of you may be going, we all going through something, honey. You're not the only one going through hell. Don't drop the ball. Just trying to tell somebody today that's going through hell. You are not the only one. Here's what I know about life. You're either coming out of a season of pain, in a season of pain, or you're headed to a season of pain. You are either stepping in the boat, in the boat, or headed to your next boat. The devil wants you to quit in the boat, in the process, in the season, in the transition. But I came to tell you today, don't drop the ball. Second lie that we hear from ourselves: I'm in this all by myself. I'm all alone. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows my sorrow. Nobody knows the troubles I've seen. <laughs> Nobody knows but Jesus. But Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. All my sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Prayer. I want to tell you today, as alone as you feel, you're still not alone. As alone as the season may feel. Look around, Peter. There's other people in the boat with you that are going through the same things in different avenues that you're going through. That's why David wrote in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You know why? For you, O oh God, are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Proverbs tells us, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Psalm 46 says, God is our refuge, our strength. I love this part of the scripture. And an ever-present help in the time of trouble. 
In the gospel of Matthew, an angel appeared to Mary and said, you will have a son and you will name him Emmanuel, for God is with us. I came to tell somebody today who's struggling with loneliness and feels like you're all by yourself. He is Emmanuel, God who is with you. He'll be with you in the storm, honey. He'll be with you on the mountaintop. He'll be with you when all hell is breaking loose. He'll be with you when he leaves you, when he left you, when she abandoned you, when your parents betrayed you when your kids forsook you God is Emmanuel the God who is with us and the third lie that we hear is no matter what you can play some of that Devin the third lie that you hear when you're going through hell is I'm just not gonna win this battle I'm gonna lose I will not be victorious how in the world is this ever gonna work how in the world am I going to make it? I got 30 people in a storefront building. I'm 30 pounds overweight because all I'm eating is carbs because I can't afford no protein. Come on here. I drive. The, I remember that Ford F-150. It was like a 1980-something. It had holes everywhere. No cup holder. So I took, a, <laughs> I took a drill and a drill gun, and I actually drilled a cup holder to the dashboard. I thought, it's not worth nothing. Who cares? Me. <laughs> I'm a cup holder. parked behind the building, dressed up in a suit because I didn't want Elder Mark at the time and Pastor Greg to see this great, this great leader in the kingdom pulling up, sweating. I had to run aside, wipe all the sweat off me to get ready to preach. Sometimes I had faith in my tank. I'd pop that clutch, turn the engine off and go downhill to get to the church. But we got there and we still here. One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible is found in Colossians chapter number two and in 2 Corinthians, but Colossians chapter number two says this, and Christ disarmed the powers and the authorities. He made the devil a public spectacle of all of his powers, triumphing over him or on the cross. The word here, disarmed, means to strip off and spoil. Jesus literally stripped Satan, not of his power, because he's still a powerful entity, but of his authority over you. He has no right to attack you. He has no right to implant thoughts in your head. He, he's operating, it's called illegally. It's not proper authority. You have the authority, Luke 10, 19, over all the powers of the devil and nothing shall by any means harm you. I want us all to say this, say, hell, hell. has zero, has zero. Authority, authority over my life. 1 John 4, 4 says, you are the children of God, little children, and you have overcome because greater is he who is on the inside of you, Yahweh, than he that's in the world. So then, we don't fight for the victory, we fight from a place of victory. Okay, we've all heard this before, especially in these kind of churches. We've heard this, we fight for the victory. Ooh, that's good. We fight from the victory. Praise God, hallelujah. Listen to this one. Our fight isn't to claim the victory. You don't have to claim it. Just walk in it. Now, the other night, when Mike Tyson beat Jake Paul, Mike Tyson was doing this. He got punched a couple times in the head. This is what he did not do. I guess it's over. Mike Tyson was like this the whole fight. And even Miss Amanda, who got shafted in that fight, she sh they should let her win. Miss Puerto Rico. She fought with everything within her till the end of the match. Tyson fought with everything within him to the match. He just walked in the victory. You didn't see quit on him. You got to stop letting quit being seen on you. You know, some people say, how are you doing today? Like, horrible. <sighs> Everything's falling apart. No, not everything is falling apart. You got to find, my wife always tells me this, you got to find the win. Come on. You may have lost all your money. You may be losing your house. You might be losing your car, but thank God you still got that cat. <laughs> I mean, you got to find the win somewhere. Thank God you got breath in your body. Come on in here. One, one, of, one of the most greatest people of faith is in this room is Gregory Ponder. He's got great faith. He always tells me, no, I don't. Man, yes, you do. 
He's, he's always being attacked physically, but yet when he's not in the hospital, guess where he's at? He's right here in church. I don't ask him, how you doing, Greg? He don't say to me, just horrible, miserable, my life is over. He's like, man, I'm here. Got to find the win. You got to find the win today. You may be in a dark hour this morning. The winds may be fighting against you. You may feel like your senses, come on, when we're being attacked and fought, we don't, we don't feel our faith, come on. But our faith has nothing to do with our feelings. It's not the soul part of us, that it's the spirit part of us that has to do with our faith. We have to stand and believe God that he's gonna do what he said he's gonna do. I wanna ask you a question today. If you're in the room this morning and you say, you know what, I'm either in the boat, the battle, I just came out of a huge battle, or I'm afraid that I'm, I'm actually walking into a battle right now, but I'm gonna refuse to quit. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna keep on standing in faith. If that's you today, I want you to stand to your feet and say, I don't care what faces me in life, I'm gonna continue to stand in faith. I want you to stand to your feet and say, that's me. Here's what I know about life. It changes. We go through seasons, we go through cycles, and it won't always be this way. If you're struggling, I want you to know to be encouraged. Don't drop the ball. Keep pressing in. Keep on going. Keep on running after Jesus. It's eventually going to shift and change for you. If today's message was a blessing to you, I want to encourage you, hit that giving button and partner with us today so we can continue to move across this map and across this globe and reach more people for Jesus. I love you. I'm so thankful that you watched this show today. And until next time, may God encourage you, help you, and empower you. I'll see you in the next video.